Mikey Sievers, last time I saw you, we were running around in the swamps. We were, both times. That's exactly both right. Times. You know what, you have a passion for something, um, which is interesting to a lot of folks. And a lot of folks, you know, th this is not their world, so they don't quite understand. Usually when somebody calls you, it's a problem. Right. I lost all my chickens to raccoons. People don't know what to do. There's a way to fix this problem. People don't know what to do, and there's there's people you can call, of course, or you can take the initiative to learn. You yeah. know, and, and trapping is, more or less a lost art. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that people don't understand, like you said, but what they do understand about it, they've misunderstood. And you say trapping to people, they automatically think big traps with teeth on them and, and you know, you know, poor little animals being tortured. And, and that's the idea that people have is that you're out to, to just harm animals. Right. You know, that's not the idea. And I, I release a large amount of animals, you know, because I understand that we have to protect our ecosystem. And it, it's, it's having the right equipment set up correctly Correctly, mm -hmm. and using the right equipment for, for what animal you're going to go after. For years, they've had different versions of dog-proof traps, and mm -hmm. dog-proof traps are exactly that. They are a trap that is designed strictly to hold coons. Mm -hmm. Not that you don't catch your occasional possum or skunk down in it, but the whole idea is to have an animal with a prehensile hand that can reach down in here and pull around on the trigger system. And these right here, fairly easy to set. You get them all set up. Your bait's down in there, you've taken you know, a stick or something to put your bait down in there, and that coon reaches down inside of this. When he sets it off, this, that goes off on his hand and it holds him there. Right. Now the whole idea, people say, oh, you know, the, you, I've released many a small coon out of these that, it was, that wasn't viable to keep you know, right. for, their, for their fur, for profit. So the trap comes out of the ground and proper swiveling is this mm -hmm. right here, where this trap turns and spins. That coon rolls around, he rolls around, he rolls around, and he's able to just keep turning around. Some people add more swivels, you can, it doesn't hurt. I am, that animal doesn't have built pressure. He doesn't, you know, bind that chain up and build pressure up where he can hurt himself. Where did you get this one? Where did you get This that came one? from Minnesota Trapline. This gotcha. is a Bridger T3, which um, Bridger is now owned by an American company. And, it's, it's good quality. What's, what's something like that cost? This is about $13. Um, these right here are a little bit beefier, a little more upgrade, about $15, $16. Right. Um, this one right here has a pull only trigger, which means the animal has to reach down in there and pull up on the trigger. Gotcha. I like these near houses, near you know pets, things like that, because the occasional cat might try to reach down in there, but the cat can't pull up on that trigger. Right, you it's know? very specific. So, very specific, these are very specific. These are push pull, you know, people say, oh, you get better catches with it. I don't see much difference. These right here are what's called an Alcatraz trap. You, these right here, you can set with one hand. Mm -hmm. Press that down, push it up, put your bait down the bottom, mm -hmm. shut your door on it, good to go. And quick and easy. Okay, you've got a raccoon. Now, your, your work it? just begins. Now, what do you do with it? Yeah. Um, and I tell people, the first thing you need to be sure of is that you can kill that raccoon. Mm -hmm. Don't catch him if you can't kill him. Um, know how you're going mm -hmm. to kill that raccoon. Is a 22 one of the ways to do it? I mean, I know, I know you don't want to mess the hide up if you're going to sell they, it. They, they allow for one to two holes, okay. you know, in an animal. And one to the head is perfectly fine. I got a little array of everything here. I have moved to using a lot, because I have my nephew that goes with me a lot. Um, he's 14, and I've got a younger nephew you got to meet, Andrew and Noah, yeah. they go with me. This right here is a Bridger number two. Number two is as, as big a trap as we need in Kentucky for mm -hmm. anything we're gonna catch. We don't have wolves, we don't have mountain lions. Right. A number two trap, and this is actually in what's called a four coil trap, which most of them, as you order them, are two coiled. They have mm -hmm. two big springs on them. These have an added set of springs like this, which make them stronger. Um, and these, they make setters for them that are extended. In fact, I sold my last pair to an older gentleman the other day that has arthritis and stuff in his hands, and he was concerned that he wouldn't be able to set his newer traps that he was gonna buy. Well, it's just a, a cheater bar mm -hmm. is all it is. It slides over them. You can make your own, you know. But these right here, these are a dogless trap, which means they do not have on a trap. This right here is called a dog. This, this is what holds, once this lever comes down, this goes over the lever, and this is what holds the pan down. This right here, as you can tell, does not have that. But it's got this extended bar right here, which attaches straight to the jaw, which is nice because it's a little easier to set. Mm -hmm. And you know, you have less, the less moving parts you can have in something, I feel the better. Um, but this trap right here, this number two, I get it in what's called an offset. And if you look at any of these other traps, 
they're closed all the way. They, they shut tight. Mm -hmm. I get an offset trap for one good reason. It doesn't close all the way down on the animal's leg. It, it, and so if I catch a fox in this trap, which most guys will say, well, that's a little large, but with that offset on there, it closes down and doesn't close all the way and allows them some relief from that. And this is just a, a humane modification that we've made over the years and come to find out that it doesn't, you don't lose animals, right. you know. Um, but again, the swiveling, this trap right here, it'll turn and turn and turn. All right, now I notice you gravi gravitate towards that trap. I mean, you've got a lot of them here. Right. You've got many years of experience, and you've talked to old timers. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I took the time, which if young people in middle age and older alike would take the time to go sit down with the older gentleman and ask Thank you. stories. Thank if you. nothing else, just ask them about their life. Yeah. And not only will it make you more interested in going out and doing this and making your own They've stories. They've already made their mistakes. And you know, and I, I told a kid this morning, that works for us. You don't have to learn from your own mistakes. Mm -hmm. Learn from somebody else that already made them. Tell us about this guy. And well, <clears throat> this, this is for, this is a kill trap is what this mm -hmm. is. Um, it's considered a conor bear or quick kill trap. Um, the idea behind this is these set down. These springs are extremely hefty. Mm -hmm. um, and this this will open up in a manner in which whenever the animal hits this trigger, it folds back into itself. Mm -hmm. And ideally set correctly, uh, like we saw with the beaver that I caught when we were right. out there, it catches them right behind the head. Boom. It's a dead animal. All right, now these, uh, I'm looking at this, some of this stuff's homemade. Right, you know, a lot of this stuff is, if you've got a teenager in shop class, he can take a little plan for that and make it in shop class. These right here are, we talked about the conor bear traps, mm -hmm. you know, the, the kill type traps. These right here, bait goes in the back of it, back here, we have a little grating on it, mm -hmm. so the way they animal can smell it, but realize they can't get to it. And this is a 160, mm -hmm. which is a touch smaller than a 220, and it sets back in here, and the animal goes into it, Boom. He hits him, he's done. Now what might you use, what kind of problem animal might you use it for? Coons. This is mainly coons. used for coons. Now you'll catch possums and you'll catch skunks in them. Every once in a while you'll hear somebody online talk about catching a fox or something in them. But generally, coons. Coons are a main focus of this. A kid can set this up again takes out the idea of having to dispatch it. And you know, if you've got a 10 year old that wants to do this, these are great. You know, again, pair of setters, like I had in my hand over here, pair mm -hmm. of setters. You can set these traps very easily with these setters. And that basically clamps and down. These clamp the springs down. Right. And then that way you can put the safeties on them. The safety's a little stop that keeps them from just opening back up. If you don't have time to put wood together, or even a wire cage like this, which mm -hmm. is the same concept, Square five gallon bucket, which this one is not necessarily a tidy cat bucket. <laughs> well, tidy cat buckets are about the best ones. Highly sought after. Yeah, they're highly sought after. Um, tidy cat, you can use a round bucket, they don't sit quite as well in them, mm -hmm. but they perfectly hold a 220 conover. Right. Snares are, are simply a, a piece of cable. You know, you have different sizes, 3 sixteenths and, and all different sizes of cable. Um, and that becomes a preference thing. You can order them online, already pre-set up, pre-done. You don't have to make them yourselves. So in essence, and when something comes through there, comes it pulls through. against it. And this lock right here that you see slide down, mm -hmm. once it pulls down, you can't. It's not coming out. It doesn't come back up. Now I need that handbag. Yeah. Just Des desperately. <laughs> that's your, that's your good one. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. Here's a, now what I'm seeing here is is I'm. It looks like some anchor stuff to me. It is. This is this is different ways to stabilize things and and keep them where you want them mm -hmm. and and put them down where you want them. Um, these right here are just real simple pieces of conduit pipe. Um, I bought these from a gentleman up in Michigan. Had him send them to me. They're kind of rough. Um, Basically, all they are is a, is a method to squeeze these down mm -hmm. where they, they stabilize up. They're tight. They don't just fall and off. Basically, it's just, it's a just piece one of, of those. It's a piece of pipe, and you can use it for any size. You know, there's different sizes. These right here are real nice. The one and a half, you set them, slide it up over on this, and then you can tack a parsnip or turnip or carrot or something like this. This is for muskrats, and you can catch uh -huh. coons and mink with it too. But you take it, and they use this as a shelf because it's a solid piece of ground to them is all they figure it is. So they swim along, they see the bait, they climb up on it, Boom. pow. And down here in Western Kentucky, we do a lot of muddy soil. So you have problems with uh, 
your big leg holds for beaver sinking down in the mud. Mm -hmm. um, this solves that. This adds a shelf just like the other and, and makes it sturdy. Same concept it would be for the rocky soil. If you can't get something level, this is automatically a level setup. These right here are drowner slides for if you're setting those leg holes for the beaver or snares. Trap connects to this. This has weight on it down in the water. It's staked down. Animal runs down just like with a snare. Can't come back up. That lock keeps it. Gotcha. Um, with the footholds um, or the uh, the dog proofs and certain footholds in the water, this right here is simply a piece of cable that you connect the one end to the tree. Now I use a quick link, the heavy duty quick link. You wrap it around, holds it there. This is heavy. I think I think this is. 5 8 cable or whatever it ends up being. Strand out, just aluminum wire cable. And then obvious one, let's hit that real quick. These right here are what's called ground stakes. This drives down into the ground. This stake turns upward, won't move. You're good. You go. can't pull it out. This stake's in there. Um, it's hard for me to pull it out with a four wheeler, but it allows the animal to sit there and swivel in this place. And this stays in the ground once it's connected to the trap like that. There are various uh, various attractants to different animals, there's whether it be as... All a, kinds of different brands. Yeah. Um, and there's a difference between bait and lure. That's right, always a big right. thing. Lure is exactly that. Like you're luring something to it. You bring it towards the set. Right. And bait is what makes it commit. Here's a beaver pelt. What a beautiful, beautiful hide. It's super soft, as you, as you can tell. Uh, now, this has been tanned. This is, this is a finished product that a man would hang on a wall. Right. You know, and, and this right here, you know, it, it's... Now, when they go to market, is that what, is that? When they go to market, they are, will you grab that for me? Yeah. When, when they go to market. This is an inside out raccoon. This is an inside out raccoon. Right. This is. That's the way that they're stretched. Their hide is stretched. This is stretched on a board. It's been skinned and it's been fleshed down. Mm -hmm. All the meat's been taken off of it. This will come off of this board and this is how they're sent to market. No kidding. And then a processor will buy it and they tan it out for garments. Well, how do they grade? It's leather quality, um, fur quality, you know, length of fur, mm -hmm. color, um, thickness of the leather, quality of the the care that mm -hmm. you took into it. You know, Dad, you put holes in it. Well, know? how do they know if it goes to market like that? How do they know what they've got? Now, this comes off the board. Gotcha. This right here, this, this coon, because he's turned inside out, mm -hmm. has a window cut in it. This is cut out where the where the uh, groin area would be. Right. It's cut completely out because they don't use that. Um, and that allows them to be able to reach the fur on the back. Right. And they're able to grade it by that. Gotcha. And gotcha. so, and, and not all animals are done like this. You know, foxes are done fur side out. Coyotes mm -hmm. are done fur side out. To get to that point, you've got to have everything from knives to skin mm -hmm. with. That's, that you skin it with, that you feel comfortable with, to this. This is a fleshing knife. Gotcha. It's got a sharp side and a dull side. Through. And this is, where you push the fat off of it. Mm -hmm. and, and that gets it down to that point. And then you pull it down on the board, proper size. You pull it down on the board that fits it. And there's all kinds of different brands of these. And, and in the end of the day, knives are quality. You pay for it. If you pay for cheap, you get cheap. Exactly. Buy quality when it comes to that. Well, I would love to, to make this segment about a 26 hour segment. And we could do that. Yes, I now, could. Now, you're so shy on everything, I'd have to pull all that information out of your I have trouble talking. Oh, yeah, bless I, your heart. I'm very bashful. Thank you so much for taking the time out okay. with us today.